Tina, uh, Midnight Set, just because I uh, had to have a blood draw today. Just uh, nothing to worry about and a couple other uh, things and I'm my arms hurt. <laughs> they really hurt <laughs> and I'm getting kind of tired. But I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about uh, something that I received uh, in the mail. Now, I'm going to preface this with a story. I got on Facebook, I think, in 2008, 2009. And I was in, in, in thick, as, thick as thieves with everybody at Breitbart. And meeting a lot of people who are conservatives that are in the film industry. Uh, my friend, the late Peter Eaton, Lee Scott, who's, I think, I, I, I would classify... Mr. Lee is a libertarian on steroids, by the way. Um, uh, Sarah Ann Fox, as we all know her, Saran, Charlie, bunch of other people. Okay, and uh, Gary Graham from Star Trek. And I met a lady named Chrissy Sigalakis. Very nice person. Really lovely, lovely person on the inside and out. She was an actress and very beautiful. One of those blonde bombshells from, you know, back in the day. She was married to a guy named Nick Siglikas or under IMDb, he would be Nick Dimitri. He was a stunt man, body double. He was also an actor and he'd been in the business Gosh, I looked up his IMDb on IMDb Pro. He started out back in the early 50s, I think. And he passed away last year. God bless his soul. Really nice guy. I, I talked to him a little bit, but mostly my friendship was with Chrissy, who's every time I post a picture, she's like, oh, it's so beautiful. And, and we've she and I, she loves sending me these pictures of Harrison Ford. And she knows so much, I love him. And, you know, I discovered that Nick knew Harry, that they used to race uh, snowmobiles up in Jackson together. And um, it's very interesting, just very, I would have loved to have talked to him. Because Nick got around, okay? Mr. Nick was in a lot of big movies and knew a lot of people. In fact, if you look at the picture from, on the thumbnail, that's Harrison Ford and George Lucas filming The Mystery of the Blues, that my favorite young Indiana Jones uh, episode. And the cool thing about it is that Nick was in it. He was a body double of Grey Cloud, who was the Native American medicine man or chief that Indy was trying to help. Okay, there's an actor that played him, but then Nick did the stunt and the and the, the body double work. Um, but here you go. This is the package Chrissy sent. So I'm going to go right for the first picture. Now, if you know me, you know how much I love Dean Martin. And Nick was in Murderer's Row with Dean Martin. This made me cry. Okay, let me go again. So I got these and I'll probably have this blown up and framed. Um, so then these aren't pictures of, of Harrison with uh, Nick or whatever, but she sent these with. So this is, uh, I guess from Young Indiana Jones probably filming in Chicago or wherever. There's George. I tried to find Nick on this um, and I can't, but this is definitely from the time they were filming uh, The Fugitive because Harrison and Her he filmed it, uh, Mystery of the Blues, right before he started filming The Fugitive 
That's in Chicago, but if you see what he's wearing, he's wearing the outfit he stole from uh, the old guy in the uh, uh, hospital. But he double, see she wrote, he doubled Grey Cloud. And now he's not gonna, sometimes he's not gonna get credited for it on IMDb, which is sad. But here's another one of my favorites. My favorite year, 1982, there's Nick and look who's behind him. One of the goats, Peter O'Toole. And here's Peter O'Toole with him there again. <laughs> I love this. I almost start crying. Now for you Trekkies, for the Trekkies out there, I'd have, I've never actually ever watched Star Trek and the next generation, but Nick is one of the Romulans with, with the with the weapon on data. Okay, and there's there's Mr. Spock, I believe. Um here's Nick again. And there he is again. And this is from City Heat. Okay, now, if you're not familiar with City Heat, City Heat was a movie that, um, uh, I gotta put this here, that uh, Clint Eastwood and, and Burt Reynolds made. And I love that movie. Okay, I really love that movie. And um, it was, it was, a, it was your typical, your typical, um, Shoot 'em up, 1984. It was made. So here he is. He's standing behind him with the gun, neck and rip torn, and that I believe is Burt Reynolds. So he was in City Heat. Here's here's a close up. And here's one that a lot of action people will go nuts over. Um, last action hero, he actually did two with Schwarzenegger. Arnie and Nick. <laughs> and that's Nick standing in front of him, Arnie and Nick. And Raw Deal, 1986, Arnie and Nick. <laughs> so then we got Okay, not one of my favorites because this gets better. Trust me. Out for Justice with Steven Seagal. He's dressed like Han Solo there. Uh, the Rockford Files. Jim Garner. It's Nick with the gun. Um, Sun Impact. No, that was a that was a. Correct me if I'm wrong, uh, that was a Clint Eastwood, Dirty Harry movie. There you go. Here you go. That's Nick right here. Hard Times with Charles Bronson. He played a fighter. There he is right there. That's Charles Bronson. There's Nick right there. Um, here's another one. Now, I'll show you a picture of Nick, and then you're going to go, oh, my God, he could have. This is Nick in one of the Monkees episodes where he played Clark Kent. There he is. Here he is in the phone booth changing to Superman. Here he is again. And there he goes. Okay. So, yeah, this guy could have actually played Superman, I think, just as well as anybody. Um... Now I'm looking, I don't know where. I don't know what happened to the other pictures here. Uh, Magnum PI. We're gonna go through all of these so I can find everything. So this is Nick in the back with uh, Carol, Carol Lindley and Sonny Liston, the fighter, the heavyweight champ that got beaten by Muhammad Ali. Um, he doubled Walter Matthau in Couch Trip. I remember he was 
a hey white phoenix he was a um stuntman he was also in cold blood uh he played the officer she put all these pictures together but he's just sitting there one of the officers that arrested the kids what a sick story that was and you gotta die laughing get ready Great, great guy playing an Indian. Okay, but we have to do this because it's important. So he played, he was in Branded, the TV series, Chuck Cutters. Nick played Young Hawk. There he is. And okay, I got to get this off there. I don't like doing this. And there's Chuck Connors. You know who he was? Big TV star back in the 60s and 50s. And then... Oh, he was in Fist. So there he is with his arms folded. With Sylvester Stallone. Now, here's a picture that's going to make you go nuts. There's a movie called The Molly Maguires. And it starred a guy named Richard Harris. And a guy named Sean Connery. Sean Connery needed a body double. There's Nick and Sir Sean. This almost made me cry. Okay, and here's Nick and Richard Harris. One of my other all-time favorite actors. Um, but let's find, he was, okay. Magnum P.I. with Tom Selleck. Another one of my favorites. Um, here we go. Kid Galahad. With Elvis Presley. The King. You believe that shit? It's, it's almost like... You know, you go through these and it's like... This is, look, you don't have to be a big movie star to make it in Hollywood. There you go there. You don't. And there's Elvis and Nick. And there they are again. And Nick wrote that. He was in a movie with me. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Rat Patrol, which was a TV show. Rat Patrol again. With Connie Stevens. A TV st show with Connie Stevens. I think this was hard times. He played a fighter. I think he's hitting Charles Bronson. I think this is from the same movie. They're all together. Going after Charles Bronson in a fight. I don't know. What all this is from. But that's him. He's a handsome guy. Uh, and that's Nick looking like someone just dragged him through the mud or over Blue Rock. And and then this. He was in a movie called, the, a TV show, movie, TV movie, called The Norless Tapes. And he played a Angie Dickinson's husband. It's kind of scary looking. So I want to share that with you because, first off, I didn't expect anything like this. Again, you never know who, you, who you're going to meet on Facebook. And you're never going to know who, whose lives you touch. I also want to say that um, Hollywood... 
uh, isn't all bad. It looks like it's all bad right now. I mean, I'm probably going to do another, uh, probably go and divide this live stream into two. Uh, cause I just wanted to give Dick his, his, um, uh, do all by himself cause he deserves it. Hollywood is a dull bad. There are good people there. Um, it's just, they don't get a chance to say what they want. They're not allowed to. I mean, Tom Selleck shows up on the Rosie O'Donnell show with tonsillitis and gets shouted down because he's a member of the National Rifle Association and she's a, a, a cow. Um, you know, you've got three hags yelling gay, gay, gay at the Academy Awards where you know, if, if any of those people had actually read the Parental Rights Act in Florida, uh, they would realize they're making asses of themselves. I want to talk about that later. But I can't, I don't know what movie this was, but this is Richard Pryor and Nick. So, um, but think about it. Nick knew all these people. He worked with everybody, from Dean Martin to Harrison Ford. Okay, he worked, I mean, he knew Sean Connery. He could tell a story, I mean, Chrissy liked to say, if only he could tell you the stories that go along with these pictures. Marty, we're not talking about that right now, okay? Um, you know, so when I get upset with people over some of this stuff, the reason why is because I know people in the business. The reason why I tell conservatives who go, I haven't seen a movie in 30 years, well, then you need to shut up. You're not involved. You've cut yourself off from the, from the culture. You don't have any right to say a word, okay? If you don't have a toe in the, toe in the pond, get the fuck out of here, okay? I don't want to hear about it. You gave up. You're a pussy. You weren't willing to fight for it. And you were telling kids, well, you don't need to do that. Okay. Meanwhile, we had guys like Nick and Chris and, and ladies like Chrissy and uh, my other friends. I have a good friend who worked for Steven Spielberg. She was one of his producers. Okay. You know, it, it, it so mind blowing the ignorance on the side of the right. Every bit as bad as the side of the left. Okay. There's, and if you look at any movies that uh, Christians put out there, any movies that um, uh, other people put out, you know, Christians or whatever put out there, they're not well made. Because the people that are conservative in Hollywood that are really talented aren't going to go against the grain. They can't. Okay. They don't, they, they don't have any power. And the people that have, there aren't enough of them. There isn't enough of a talent pool. Okay. On that side. So the screaming, well, we need an alternative. What's the alternative? All right. How about you start telling Hollywood to get your act together? Okay. We've got a pedophile problem there. We've got a, a, an over-representation of homosexuals there. Okay. And, you know, but still, there are guys like Nick that go to work every day. There are guy, there are ladies like Chrissy that go to work every day. There are working people that work, literally, that are successful. They never say a word about politics. They're afraid to. Okay. If there were more of them, they wouldn't be afraid to. Okay. But because conservatives have told their kids, don't get into that, have turned their kids off, even if the kid is a talented actor, a talented uh, film person. You don't want to do that. You want to earn money. One side destroys the culture. The other side allowed them to. Because the other side withdrew. And guess what? You deserve each other. You fucking deserve each other. Okay. Me, 
I'm going to support what's good and I'm going to what's bad. But this, the reason why I wanted to share this is because people like this guy right here are as, more, are as important or more important than the stars because these guys make it all work. Okay. All right. Without Nick, Sean Connery couldn't have done that movie. Okay. Without Nick, the guy that played Grey Cloud and Mystery of the Blues couldn't have made that. Couldn't have been in it. Because there's stunt work. Okay. And it bothers me that people out there don't see it. This is a treasure. This is, I, every time, I mean, I, when I read her note, she's like, you can keep whatever you like and then do whatever you want. I'm like, I, I gotta keep all of it. This is, this is his legacy. Okay. I didn't know Nick. I never said a word to him. I said, said hi to him a couple times on Facebook, but he wasn't on much. Chrissy's on more. Okay. I got to know her, but this is his legacy. I have to keep it. Okay. I have to, this is my mission in life. Not only to make sure people remember this man and the movies he did and the other actors he was working with, but to make sure people like him can go to work in Hollywood and not be afraid. Okay. This is, I mean, this just, this is where I start crying. I love Dean Martin. I love him. This was, this was class on a stick. Okay. That's, this is one of the highest, one of the biggest names a show business ever had. And I mean, in movies, in music, on the stage, think about it, Dean fucking Martin. And then, you know, the, the mystery of the blues with uh, Harrison and uh, George Lucas. And then, tell me, do you get bigger than this guy? That's Sean fucking Connery. Okay. I look at people and I wonder what goes through your minds. Okay. I'm going to ask a lot of people these questions too when I get uh, uh, going on here. Okay. Because I'm going to shut this down and I'm going to go live again in a little bit. My arms hurt now. But it makes me wonder. Um, what do people value anymore? We've got an entire population of people uh, in America that don't value culture. They don't. We got another population smaller that doesn't value culturally culture either, but they want to shit all over it. Okay, it's a problem, right? Entertainment's supposed to entertain everybody, right? Right. Back in the day, it did. Didn't matter what, I mean, you know, John Wayne got along with everybody. Okay, Lauren Bacall was shocked. Okay. I mean, you know, I'm sure, you know, Hugh Hefner still wonders why he burns in hell, you know, why John Wayne didn't like him. Because he treated, because Hugh Hefner treated women like shit. Okay. Man had no values. Man had no morals. You know, Hollywood is has an overabundance of people without any morals. But there are people there, a lot of them, I mean, there, I mean, what? Cameron talked about it. A gay producer he knew that voted for Donald Trump. I bet you a lot of people, names you'd be shocked by voted for Donald Trump. But because of very few people with imagined power seem to be running the joint. All right. You know, my thing is get involved. Tell them to stop it. All right. Tell them to stop it. You know, if you have to ignore, you don't, what you do is you pick a movie you want to go see. Afterlife. 
Okay. Show respect to the actors and actresses who don't offend you. And remember, there are people there every day in this, doing stunt work, doing work with costumes, music, um, you know, walk-ons, guys that don't have a star under their name in a dressing room that are as valuable or more so than the stars themselves. Because, again, without him, he couldn't do what he did. And that's a fact. Anyway, I'll be back in a little bit uh, to talk about all kinds of shit. I'll see you guys around the galaxy. And, uh, you know, go, go to IMDb and look up Nick Dimitri. Just do it.